So today is a uh, special day. We are gonna be doing a trade walk with all of our trades. This is kind of like the grouping of all of the minds on the project coming together in one day to figure out who's going first, who's going second, where they're gonna be laying this out, how they're gonna be laying that out, and making sure that everyone's on the same page. So that way when somebody else shows up to the project, they're getting the space they need to provide the service that they need to. So because we don't do mechanical plans on our plans, everyone needs to meet at one time, once framing is complete, so they can all see their routes and how they're gonna get where they need to go and making sure that, hey, if the plumber needs this soffit here, can the HVAC guy use this soffit there? So kind of making sure everyone's synergizing together, working as, uh, working as a team, making sure that this project runs really smoothly, right? Okay, so basically that's, that's what we're doing today. We're doing a site walk and we're getting everyone here. We're gonna have the cabinet guy here. We're gonna have the electrical, low voltage, plumbing, and HVAC. But you'll get me and you'll get the designer showing you uh, how we put these projects together. fully framed and we just get it clean like today we're cleaning it up and the second floor is nice and clean really really puts the house into perspective for me I get to see the whole thing come together I make a few decisions in the moment do I want this here do I like it here does the measurements work again we have all of our trades coming in today so we're gonna really get to get everyone's feedback any last-minute changes that need to be made get made and then we roll with it no stopping us train that keeps on pushing. So I'm excited to see it all today. We're gonna, I have a few things that I wanna kind of change on my own. The designer will be coming here shortly. I'll get her feedback on it, make sure that it's the right decision. Why don't we start walking through with the electrician? We'll go check it out. So I've mentioned this before, but this door is in the wrong place. I'm gonna get moved over. This wall was installed backwards, but the door is going to be on this side. I'm thinking I want the door to open like this. Funny switches will go here. I want power right here. I want to put like one of those cool mirrors. Everything you use um, in the master room, right here is for lights. One light over there. Two lights here, the fan. So the way we mark out a lot of the stuff is we, we have markings that we put on the wall. If you can see the SSS with the line. That marks out our switches. Right here, we put the this, this symbol here for our outlets. And the, the electrician can now start walking through, figuring out his load calcs, everything that he kind of needs to put into the home, how many lights per bedroom, uh, how many switches per bedroom, get everything counted up. Once the cabinet guy shows up and marks all the locations that we need them to be in, then we can get everything that we need on center, the chandelier, this much off center, this much on center, and put all those pieces into place. So it's a, it's a really team effort to put everything into an organizational fashion and make sure that it all gets executed appropriately. TV over there. Mark the TV. So if you remember, the trusses all come pre-installed, or pre-made, right? Uh, and they come set up like a puzzle piece. So if you can actually see, they're set up in numbers. And they're basically just created to sit exactly where they need to be. marking out everything on the floor so everyone knows what's going to be happening there and marking it out there plus they're going to be marking it out on their CAD plans and adjusting for any measurements that need to be adjusted so when they go back to the shop they can create everything they need to everything in this house is custom made there's no prefab cabinets that get bought from a store everything is custom so every inch matters so that's what they're marking out that's what they're going to be taking care of today so that way everything goes into production today and they're ready when we're ready forget about all 
the other trades that need to come before them. So consider drywall, consider wood details, consider all of these elements before your markouts. So that way when the finish is in, you're actually getting the right center and not the wrong center. This is the master bathroom. And here we're gonna be doing, so we, we built out a little room for our, for our um, restroom there. We have a makeup vanity going in here, and then we have a double sink vanity going in right here. Um, this will be up against the shower right here, two sinks. I have a nice makeup vanity going across here, and then we'll have a big open glass shower here, and the uh, freestanding tub going on center of that window. So, looking good. about this house in the framing stage is actually, and Daniel, you can, you can show us this, right? What? All of the walls lean about what? 3%? 3%. 3% the walls lean. So <laughs> that way, you know, everyone's just wondering what's not plumb and they just, it just drives everyone nuts. It's a really cool feature to have in a house. So we're gonna go through the house and do the plumbing walk with him. And then we'll, uh, right now we're also going through the uh, house with the electricians upstairs. So the designer's going through upstairs with the electrician. I'll go do the walk with the plumber and then meet the two together. Okay. So right now, all of our rough is here. This is the center of the sink. We have a cabinet in here. So this is our center of the sink. Yeah, the, okay. the kitchen. Do, do you want to move everything in here? We do have a cabinet going here. So it's a 24 inch cabinet yeah. and a 12 inch cabinet. You want to leave it in there? Here is our center of hood. We'll have this right here for the finish. Yes, pot filler. Yes. Stuff workshop. So basically, uh, we're walking through the house with the plumber right now. All of our uh, locations are being marked out. We have some spots where we might have some trouble, so we're trying to figure out to make sure that we can get what we need fixed and changed addressed. Uh, there are some times where we have to break some concrete and shift some things over, so knowing that now, so that way we can rush production when we're in it, is really important. Knowing that there's changes that have to be made and making those changes at the right time are important. So we're not worrying about it at the end of the project, right? You know, it's true. Whew, working hard today. So what we're doing right now is going through all of the, the, uh, the CAD drawings and the notes that we have here, laying out all of the plumbing, and then we're using the cabinet guy's drawings to basically make sure that what's on the paper is on field. If there's any changes that need to be made, now we know about it. So we're, we're making sure that everything lines up per, uh, perfectly. Hey guys, I'm Jason. Today we're in Pacific Palisades. We're gonna learn about Huber Engineered Woods with Matt, who works for the company. Welcome guys, thanks for uh, tuning in today. I just wanna talk about Zip System, an Advantex subfloor, which is also being used in this project. And today we're gonna to tell you how to build better. So the first thing, well, there's a few things that we're gonna be uh, checking out today. Uh, the first thing is the actual plywood that we're using. So we're, we have two pieces of, two different pieces of plywood on this site. Yes. Correct? Yep. And we have, Two different types of tape. Yep. And this cool little uh, activator. I call it an activator. It's just a roller, but Matt thought it was funny that I called it an activator, so I continue to call it an activator. Because you got to roll the tape. So, what we got here is Zip System, and then there's Advantex subfloor. Zip System is an integrated WRB into an OSB panel. So, Jason's gonna grab a piece of it, but basically what we got here is a performance panel. No longer do you need to wrap the house. You can see there in the back, it looks like a standard OSB, but it is far from that. 
The reason why we call it a performance panel is we actually are injecting a resin into the molecular structure of the panel itself, or the wood, changing the overall structure, making it stronger and water resistant, and then infusing this beautiful uh, sienna colored material onto it, um, which then is your, your WRB or your wrap. Um, put up the panel like you do any structural uh, sheer, sheer or, or regular um, exterior plywood and uh, nail it up as you need. Take the seams and then you've got yourself your single layer WRB. So when you put your siding up, you put it directly on it. So I'll tell you why I love to use it. The reason I'm, I'm loving it is because one, it's a waterproofing system. So this, this is going on and automatically, once I tape this thing, my house is sealed. That's great. Nail penetration, any sort of penetration that happens through here, uh, you know, normal wood will absorb that water. This does not because of the epoxy that it's been glued in with, okay? Um, and the second thing that I really love about it is, you know, in California, we don't have any air requirements yet for homes, but insulating the home, keeping the home, you know, cool, keeping it hot, whatever it is you wanna do, air, it's all about air. And this has an air barrier completely attached to the wood. So once, because this is sealed, we're not putting any paper against this. You know, there's no, there's no space for air to get in there and create any, any sort of space that's coming through or out of the home. This is now a sealed home, which is pretty big. I have a feeling you know, eventually California will- uh, About four years. About four years from now, that will be a thing in California, making sure that, you know, homes do have that, yeah, an that air barrier. system, an air barrier in place, essentially. And this is giving me a heads up on that sort of system. Absolutely. And it's a pretty cool system to be using, and especially to be integrating into my projects is a, uh, a big bonus for me. You know, the, the air barrier and what, the benefit of it is, is it's not just an air barrier because a lot of people will then say, oh gosh, you know, we also need to think about, you know, vapor release. It's actually got the perfect permeability, about 12 to 16 perms. So it actually has the vapor release you need in case of the condensation buildup from your air conditioner. Uh, but then at that same point, you're gonna save money on your energy bills by having an air barrier built in your house. So what Jason's doing is, is technically building better. We're gonna show you how you tape the seams and get that total barrier and the 30 year warranty to be established on your house. So this is the three and three quarter flashing tape. It's basically what gives you the total system of the zip system. Once you put it on, the key is to roll the tape. About eight pounds of pressure gives it the activation needed. Hence the activator. Okay. And if you get in close here, what I would recommend you see is there's a Z imprint that's put onto the tape. That Z it is what allows the GC or the developer to know that his 30 year warranty has been put into effect. Once you've done all the seams, you've got your full water and air barrier complete on your zip system house. That's awesome. That's absolutely awesome. The coolest thing that I wanna show you about their products is actually the stretch tape. Yeah. And that's in this box right here. See, sometimes I get to hold the tools. Look at this guy. He looks happy to be doing his job. That's my buddy, Mark Overlander. And I'll tell you what, the guy's a stud. He's an absolute beast. How, how, do, you, how do I get on the box? How do I get on there? Buy more wood. <laughs> so in a window this big, it's not necessary, not necessary oh, okay. to do a full monolithic stretch tape all the way across. You can, a lot of people do. Um, but we're also trying to help the builders save costs, right? So what I tell people is as long as you're giving it up at least six or eight inches up and six or eight inches over, and then you can use the regular flashing tape across the bottom, you're going to get that total look that you're, that total waterproofing need that you, you have to accomplish for your windows. So about three inches on one side, three inches on the other. Yes? That's about right. It depends on what your code requires for you. Um, some they want to have it come all the way to the back. The other part is that they really just want to make sure that it's coming behind the window flange. You get your speed square, I don't have one today, push it into the corner. Once you've done that, then you get to have the stretch.
Oh, I'm gonna get murdered on how well I did this one. Not, not my best stretch. There's a lot of experts out there in the world that stretch tape. Put it on, give it a roll. Tape has now begun its activation or its wetting process and it will be complete in about three days of fully adhering to the panel. And like Matt said, we only do the corners. So we'll do this corner and we'll do this corner. And then we can take the standard three inch tape and go on top of this and all the way over. And that saves a little bit of money and a little bit of, of that stretching time. Question for you, Matt. Yeah. Does this work like a standard uh, flashing? Yes, it, this or, is. Or can, can you overlay, underlay? Does it matter how you lay it? Well, you, you know, I think what you're also talking about is the idea of uh, traditional house wrap or, or the way that, you know, people were waterproofing before where you had to start thinking about creating that flap for people to then tuck up underneath. Yeah. Well, you don't know, no longer need to do that because the fact that the WRV is integrated into the panel, all we need to do is protect those, those uh, you know, weak areas such as the corner of a window and allow that water to hit it Drip sheet right off. back down, sheet right off, right? There's no longer a need, the, or a need to be able to create that water flowing effect, right? So basically what he's saying is, is on a, normal, on a normal house, you have multiple layers that need to fold on top of each other to make sure that water is sheeting appropriately. In this system, it's been, it's been engineered to where you don't need to worry so much about that. Correct. Yeah, yeah, and, and you'll have some people talk about, well, what about the seams that run horizontal, right? Well, what happens is this tape is, is to the panel, it's called self-terminating. The self-terminating terminology basically means once you've rolled the tape, that becomes, well, right here is an example, that becomes a, a monolithic uh, a piece of material in a sense. Water is not going to seep in behind this because they've been engineered to work with each other so that this 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 line of tape to panel is actually oh well, not self-sealed self-terminated um the other thing that that jason used on this project here which is actually a, a product that i feel is uh the no-brainer in construction you can't see it uh, from where we are but we should probably go up and look at it it's a we can check tech. underneath the floors all right yeah. Advantech subfloor, it, it's the next level of subfloor. I like to say it's the no-brainer of subfloors. This subfloor, and he's using the three-quarter product, it's much stronger than a typical three-quarter product, whether it be plywood or OSB, and that comes back to our resins. Um, it actually has its own ESR code, which is ESR 1785, so it's something the ICC has evaluated as um, a better subfloor. Not only all Can that. Can you imagine he had to memorize that? And there's so much more. <laughs> uh, not only that, but it's water resistant. And so what we have is a 500 day no sand guarantee. So this house isn't dried in yet, right? But it could rain tomorrow. And, and Jason doesn't need to then go and wrap his house and protect it at all. We are not worried about water hitting this subfloor or it collecting in any way. And um, I'll tell you a story. Yes. I once had a house that was fully framed with uh, regular OSB, we had a torrential pour. The whole house was soaked. Oh. I actually had to you know, rent a whole bunch of heaters, get the whole house dried out. I think the, the amount of houses I've framed with this already, uh, I, we, just, we just had rain. I think I found two spots of water. It, we're, not, we're not taped, we're not nothing spots of water and it was that big which is insane yeah normally it's the whole floor is wet you know it's, it's a mess we have to broom everything out yep this was like a lifesaver already. yeah so. and, and it'll and once it dries out it'll look just like it did the day you put it in i mean the advantages of advantech is uh, it's incredible it's so the it's difference no between advantech yep you did it i nailed it. it yes <laughs> i nailed it <laughs> Um, the difference between that and the sheeting yeah. is, is it solely the, uh, the flashing aspect of it? The, uh, the barrier, the water the barrier. barrier. Uh, technically, you know, no, there's a little bit less resin in the zip system as opposed to the subfloor. The, the subfloor needs more because it's in the horizontal application, right? So it's meant to take water on top of it. Mm -hmm. um, with zip, you know, because it's in a vertical, we, we know it's not going to, water's not going to be sitting on it, right? It's not going to be uh, in, in the situation where like a subfloor. So we can, we can treat them a little bit differently, but they are built very, very similar. Got it. There you have it. Guys, this has been super informative. Thank you so much, Matt, for coming out here and yeah, showing us this. Yeah. Like, 
every time I learn more and more and more. It's like a literally a constant education. I can't memorize all the things that you memorize. Uh, I'm just not that good at it. Uh, there is no script for this show. No. It's all completely wong, swung. It's all completely made up on the spot. That's what it is. Well, I mean, I'm going to do some of this myself. I'm going to do some uh, some some flashes, examples. Like put some tape up. I'm going to I'm going to get some footage of me doing it. Do you want to watch me do it? I kind of want to see this. You know, I'm not going to make fun of him. I'm not going to say anything mean or rude. Should we make a bet? Is there a bet we can put on this? Well, that you did shit better than me. Yeah. Oh, I like that bet. Okay. Is it lunch? I mean, what do we? Do? I don't care what the bet is. We can do whatever. Maybe the next house is free. No, but I am excited <laughs> to see how well he does. This is going to be great. All right, I'll take the jacket off and do this. Woo Let's go. Woo. What's up, guys? Okay, so listen, it's Jason here. I don't normally work, so uh, when I do, I'm very well protected. Uh, thanks to Hammer for the, uh, the hard hat. That way a hammer can fall on me and I'll be safe. I just made a bet with Matt that his corner is worse than what my corner will be. So I am going to attempt to do a corner of, this is the famous six inch stretch tape. And uh, we're gonna be doing this corner right here. And then I'm gonna finish it with the regular uh, three inch tape here, okay? So basically I gotta make sure this is better than Matt's. That's pretty <laughs> much um, my only goal here. So far so bad. All right, let's see. Taking it slow and easy. Good technique. Okay. Matt kind of did it in a rush. So he, he's a little bit of a fool. He didn't realize that I have more time. He kind of went a little bit crazy, right? So now pre -bet, I'm gonna- Pre-bet, <laughs> This is pre-bet, you're right. Okay, now I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna activate my activator the stretch tape on this side. And now I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna go this is cor that corner first. Yeah, corner this first. I'm a little nervous right now. <laughs> That's an awfully nice corner. I got one bubble, I think. One bubble, not bad. Okay, I think I'm done. I think I got it, time for the inspection. Uh, we're gonna let you guys decide. So in the comments, let me know, did my corner come out good or did Matt's corner come out good? Can I concede? Can I, can I concede? I honestly feel like I just got outdone by Jason. Of JJP Construction. I don't know what to say right now, but congratulations. <laughs> so what do I win? Lunch. Lunch. Fair. All right. So I just won lunch with Matt. Uh, I don't know if that's a win or a losing proposition, but uh, I'll take it anyways. Um, but that was a lot of fun. I hope you guys will uh, take the challenge to build better and go ahead, look at the products, see if there's something you can do better on your site. Uh, build one. This is the stretch. This is what they don't show in the videos. This is what you get at JJP. All right, build, buy, build, sell. This is what you get. Real life reality. So basically, I won the uh, corner challenge here. So that means I kind of won the ability or the opportunity. I don't know how I'm winning here. I feel like I'm losing on every, every, uh, every turn I get here. But um, I won the opportunity to tape the rest of the window and see how I do with the rest of it. So the first thing you want to make sure you do, overlap it at least three to four inches, whatever. Um, now again, this is not the stretch, this is just the regular tape, so hopefully I don't mess this up. Matt, you got your knife? Ah, 
Ah, my finger! That wasn't funny. No. That wasn't funny. <laughs> what happened? Is this on? Can you hear me? Hello? All right. So, I'm gonna take the activator, roll the tape, Even Jason can roll the tape. <laughs> Don't tell him I said that. All right, and then I'm just gonna fold this over onto the, the sheet itself and make that a monolithic piece essentially, right? Yep. Now, I do want to talk about one quick thing. It did take a minute for me to adapt to the system because I was scared about a lot of different things. How are the building inspectors going to uh, you know, react to this? How are the engineers going to react to it? Uh, getting engineers on site, getting observation reports, getting all of this stuff done. And you know, if you're in Southern California, you can reach out to Matt. I'll put his information below. But he was really helpful at making sure that that process was going to be really smooth for me. And will most likely be smooth for you too. So don't be afraid of adapting a new system uh, just because you're unaware of it. There's a lot of things you can learn, a lot of things you can get better with. And truthfully, you never know until you try. So once I gave this thing a go, I really became a lot more comfortable with building. There were a lot less things to worry about now. So as, as I continue to grow with this product, I'm excited about what more I can do. And you know, if you have any questions, leave them below. I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, I'd be happy to get you Matt's information, get, uh, get you talking to him, get the conversation started. But this is a great product and something you should really be looking into. I hope you uh, learned something today. Thanks for watching. What's up, guys? It's the same video, nothing's changed. It's the same person, same guy, remember me, Jason. Matt's still here, don't worry, he hasn't gone too far. So there's there's a, a few things we can see. We can see one that goes in a little bit too deep. And we've also got some, some misfires over here, some nails that just completely missed, or we took them out, they just didn't work. So covering, covering openings, essentially, those have to be taped or with the caulking, the what do you call flash. it? The liquid flash. Okay, so anytime you have a complete hole, that needs to be covered with the liquid flash or with tape, doesn't matter. And anytime you have an over sink, okay, so a nail goes goes in too deep. This isn't the best example of it, but this is a good example, right? Somewhat here. of it. Okay. This is nothing. This is a high five. You don't need to cover it. Um, there is no worries here. Your 30 year warranty is 100% in effect with this. You could overdrive that nail to about halfway through the board and we're still gonna be okay. So it's another benefit of the system. So, so that's really important to understand that essentially all, all of the, the technology that's inside that board is, is still strong enough to protect your house even if half of the board was missing, essentially. Okay, I mean, that's kind of how you have to look at it. There, there's a board here, the nail goes through half of it. This half that's still existing through the board is totally fine, right? So that's kind of how you have to look at that. There, there is still a nail penetration, but that's usually gonna hit the uh, stud. So you still have a connection to a connection. Hey guys, one more thing to tell you about. Jason over here at JJP Construction is taking his build to the next level by using our Vantec subfloor adhesive as well. With this glue sitting on his BCIs or his engineer joists, he's able to get a 10 year squeak free warranty by combining that with our subfloor and any kind of deformed shank or screw. So I joist, the best glue in the world, uh, a Vantec subfloor and a rink shank and you're able to get a 10 year squeak free warranty. Talk about building better. Now we're doing the HVAC walk with the HVAC contractor, and the, right now we're, we're finding out where the platform should go. So we keep the heating units in the attic and keep the AC units on the roof on these smaller houses uh, to allow us more room on the on the, uh, the ground floor or backyard. We're not taking up any space with that. We don't need any soffits. Well, drops. Hey. 
Yeah. Yeah. That makes me happy. Uh -huh. check with him about the... Hey. Yeah. Maybe just let me know. That's what I'm Jason, um, I know that you needed to pick up some of our accessories from the location down yeah. in Torrance. You want me to go down there and pick those up for you? Matt, thank you so much for offering. I love that move. This yeah. is the move. Yeah. This is, this is, look, if you're not married yet, if you're married, if you're gonna be married, doesn't matter who you're married to, that's the move. Ask to help once it's already done. That's, that's the best move, man. Me? Hey, hey, I'd love to help you. Oh man, somebody already did it. Oh man. I saw him drive away. Can I, can I clean the dishes and they're already in the dishwasher? Thanks, Matt. It's good to see you. Good to see you, I'll see you soon. Classic move, classic. So right here, uh, we're reframing the fireplace. So again, remember, so now Daniel here is the framer. And like I said, we wanna make sure that all of our drains land on center. So Daniel's going to be blocking that out so we can get enough space to put our drain on center. So clearly right here, we're gonna be getting the fireplace in on the master. That's happening upstairs. Right now they're reframing it to make sure that it's gonna fit perfectly. Watch your head. It's funny, this is a video, you're not actually with me on site, but I still care about your safety. Everybody asks, who's the first trade on site? Well, plumber or electrician is really the, the guest. Today, our first trade on site, Jordy, say hi. Hi. That's Jordy, he's part of the electrician's crew. He's setting all the lights right now. So once we get all the lights set, then we can get the HVAC done, then we can get the fire sprinklers done. And we really do a hard push on the trades. We, I give them about three weeks until I drywall. So not a crazy expectation, but damn crazy. So again, so all of those, all the can lights are going in right now. Uh, once all of them go in, we, we do a walk to make sure they're all approved. All the locations are correct. The lights that usually have the most issues are the ones in the closets and the ones in the bathrooms. The reason for the closets is because an electrician will usually use the space and try to find the center of that space to put a light, especially in the closet. But actually, in these closets, you have to consider that we're putting in cabinetry. So the cabinetry is gonna go here along this wall, here along this wall. So the light has to be centered according to something that doesn't even exist right now, which is why you'll get issues a lot of times and have to move those. That's fine, we're aware of it, we know it, we move forward with it. But in a bathroom like this, you also have to consider the lights um, due to chandeliers or due to wall sconces or due to cabinets as well. You also wanna make sure that everything is lining up appropriately to where it needs to be. So keeping those things in mind now are really important. Sometimes things go wrong, but before we, call, before we close up drywall and everything is done, that's when we check. I'll show you something really interesting. If you look right here, you can see some moments. I don't know if you can see the, the daylight poking through there. There you go. So we just went through the whole zip system with Matt. Basically, when you see things like that, those those pieces need to be taped or the liquid flashing needs to be used to make sure that that gets sealed appropriately. Pretty much everyone's out for the day. There's a few things that we still need to wrap up with, but we got a lot done. Everyone came through, everyone saw what needed to get done, and everyone communicated well with each other uh, to make sure that uh, you know what needed to get done was gonna be executed appropriately. There were a few things that we ran into issues about, the, some design elements that I wasn't thrilled with, and we tried to make sure that we can adjust those to uh, satisfy my requirements for what I want, satisfy Asia's requirement as the designer, and make sure that uh, the job still gets executed uh, appropriately. Some of the things that we talked about, we're trying to shift over the island to, get, to land things on center. Um, in terms of functionality, it ended up not working into my favor, and we're gonna stick with the original plan for functional use and making sure that the house is more functional, and it may not line up exactly with the design aesthetics that everyone tries to aim for in terms of getting things exactly on center, but uh, in terms of living in the space, it's gonna be much more uh, functional and that's usually more important, I think. Uh, so we try to lean more towards the functionality than the design 
and that's what we ended up getting here in the kitchen because it's not a massive home and it's a small home we really have to maximize the amount of space that we get and use it appropriately and not uh, frivolously so we were able to accomplish it and that's exciting uh, we had our HVAC contractor come out here. He checked everything that needed to be done. So we know exactly where our chases need to be, our soffits need to be. Our plumber came out and made sure that any of the joists needed, that need to get moved to get moved uh, so we can get make sure our, our drains are on center. Our electrician came through and made sure that he was marking out all of the locations so we know which, which doors are opening, which doors are, you know, where doors will be, um, uh, making sure that uh, the lights land on center of cabinetry so the cabinet guy came out here and marked out all of his notes. So that way, any lights that we place, they're placed correctly and we're not going back at the end of the project to shift something over one inch to get it exactly on center. We're doing all that work now, so that way at the end of the project, we're happy with the outcome and all of this work today, it was worth it, right? Put in the right amount of time, put in the right amount of effort, make sure you're organized with your project and you will get the outcome you desire. So right now we have our first fireplace getting installed. So right here, th this board is just a, is an extra protecting layer for the fire, for the heat, right? And then we have, there's a whole bunch of codes for how this gets ventilated out, but essentially the interior of this, of this box needs to be fully clean. There can't be any debris in there that can cause any fire or any like heat, right? And then he's gonna be taking this vent popping it right off the wall. Fireplaces for some reason have the most inspection checklists that need to happen. The, the connections on the pipe need to be done correctly. The, the flashing needs to be done correctly. Because you have to make sure that that heat that's coming out of this box is genuinely being transferred from that box outside without any interruption, without any issues, because that's a fire hazard. So checking these things and making sure this is done correctly is very, very important, right? Yeah, right. Any any uh any special tips? What do you got? The work is, is more better. Exactly. The measure, everything is more better. So when it's good, it's good. Yeah. That's what he's saying. Yeah. When we do it right, we're doing it right. Sometimes things go wrong, but we it, sometimes in a house like this, there isn't too much that can go wrong. Simple, it's easy. Right? Yeah, everything's good. Awesome. This fireplace is a little bit more inside. So obviously you see the venting that's happening on the other one. You see what's going on there. This one has a, a switch that's going to connect this one and make that one turn off and on. Just so you see that. There'll also be a shut off, an on and an off switch from the gas line under the window. that will be able to turn the gas on or off in case of any emergency. It's this shut off switch essentially. But uh, we got windows coming in. So this is great. We're unloading it as much as we can. We're basically going to start flashing all the windows and making sure that everything is watertight for the windows to get installed, which is basically what we were going through and working through with Matt. So once you can see all that, the windows are going to go in and we're off to the races. Please go ahead and subscribe to the channel, like this video, because if you do, other people will see it and they'll be able to like it too. And that karma will just keep rolling around for me. So if you're getting value from this, say hey in the comments, let me know what you think. Uh, I hope it's exciting stuff that you can get to see. And uh, I look forward to seeing you on the next video.